And as always, we are at our local stores ready to help you um, with whatever questions and needs you have. Um, my name is Tony. I am the retail operations manager, so I oversee all of our stores. And um, yeah, our goal is to be a resource for you. So this morning, it's just one of those ways that we reach out to our customers um, in this webinar format. So we hope that this is convenient for you. Uh, Randy Darby is going to lead our discussion today. He is our spa guard and bio guard rep, and he's been doing this for, for many, many years. He's a pro, and um, he's going to take it over. Randy? Thanks, Tony. Welcome, welcome everybody. Um, we, Tony and I decided to put this on oh, back in February. There's been so many new hot tub owners the last couple, couple of years that we get a lot of questions in the store about what to do and how to how to maintain a hot tub and we wanted to put something together that's kind of simple um and comp comprehensive and make it easy to take care of your hot tub and so with that i'm going to get started this will last probably 30 minutes depending on how many questions you have and 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 please do ask questions so oops let me get my slide queued up here all right all right, so the first thing, what do spa hot slash hot tub owners expect from their hot tub? And these are kind of the critical things that we look at. Number one, we wanna make sure the water that you get in is safe and sanitized. Um, you folks are kind of your own little health department. You wanna make sure that you're testing the sanitizer level, which I'll get into a little bit later. Uh, the water should be crystal clear. Sometimes new spa owners don't realize how clear the water should be you should be able to put a quarter down the bottom of the hot tub and be able to tell if it's heads or tails it should be that clear when the jets are off obviously when the jets are running it's going to be you know a little bit turbid but um it should be crystal clear it should feel good on your skin and eyes you shouldn't get out of the hot tub and have black bloodshot eyes or any kind of a rash or anything it should be a great experience for you and your you, you and your family So these are what we call the six keys to spa care. I'm gonna go through all of these. Um, some of them kind of take care of themselves. Some you do need to do a little bit, do a little bit more, but fairly simple. We need to have good circulation. We need to have really good filtration, which I'll talk about. There's a few housekeeping, cleaning chores, some basic water. I almost hate to call it chemistry, but water care, the things that you need to test for at home, and then how often to drain and refill your hot tub. So the first one is circulation. And, and basically what circulation is, this is the amount of time that your pump runs. And so depending on the type of hot tub that you have, if you, if, frankly, if you bought a hot tub in the last, you know, 10, 15 years, most of the hot tubs have tremendous circulation. Some of them run 24 hours a day. Some of them have settings where you only run the pump, you know, four to six hours a day. The only reason I really put this slide in is because some older hot tubs or some even newer hot tubs that don't circulate all the time, sometimes you might need to move the circulation setting up a little bit to ensure that the water's getting filtered, heated, the chemicals are being distributed enough. Sometimes, you know, if you come into the store and are having some cloudy water conditions, we might ask you about this, but having good circulation ensures that the chlorine, whatever sanitizer you're using is killing bacteria. We're removing contaminants from the water and, and really helping prevent problems. So this one kind of takes care of itself. The other piece of circulation is the aeration and the little dial up here at the top, that's an air control. Most hot tubs slash spas have, have an air. So the question was, how much should I circulate a day? So if you've got a lot of the spas circulate 24 hours a day, that's that's probably, you know, that's perfect. If you have if you have a spa that you you can adjust how much it circulates at least a couple hours a day. And obviously when when the pump's running, the heater's going to be on. So if you're not circulating enough, the water's going to cool down as well. So we definitely want to uh, make sure it's it's circulating enough to keep the water heated and keep it clean. Uh, back on this slide, so this slide's talking about aeration and the air controls that most spas have at the top lip of the spa, that allows more or less air to be injected. And 
that gives kind of the boiling look to the hot tub. It gives the hydrotherapy massage to the spa, which is great. And the, the only thing to be aware of is when the air controls are on, that tends to put obviously put more air into the water, which increases the pH, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. So whenever you add any water care products, any of the chemicals, you want to make sure the air controls are off. Um, so that we're not counteracting some of the products that we put in. So make sure, and the way you'll know that, turn that dial. If all of a sudden the jets start to, start to have more of a boiling look, that means it's on. Turn them off whenever you're adding, adding chemicals. So that's circulation and aeration. The next key is good filtration, and this is really important. All of you, imagine 99% of you, if not 100%, have a cartridge filter, as you can see in my slides here. These are kind of like big oil filters that filter out debris, keep the water clean, um, help reduce the amount of chemicals that you're using. So these do build up with debris, and these need to be cleaned periodically. Typically, we'll recommend once a month pulling them out, chemically cleaning them, I'm spraying on, you can see in my slide, it's called just called filter cleaner. We can spray it on full strength, let it sit for 15 to 30 minutes, and then rinse it off. Or you, the alternate method is to soak it. You know, take a half a bottle of the filter cleaner with enough water to cover the, the cartridge, let it soak overnight, rinse it off real thoroughly. It is real important to get this material, the, the chemical rinsed off, because if you don't get it rinsed off real thoroughly, it will tend to cause some foaming in the hot tub when you put it back in. Um, in fact, the ideal scenario would be to have two sets of filter filters, one that's in use, one that's been cleaned, rinsed, and dry. The cartridge manufacturers recommend allowing the filters to dry before you put them back in. And these, if you do that, typically these will last two or three years. If you have two sets, you'll probably get five to six years out of the filters. The way you tell if they're bad, if the obviously if they have a tear in them, the water is going to not get filtered, it's going to pass through them. Or if some of the filters have a band around the middle of them, if that's kind of gotten broken and you've got a lot of fibers coming off the filters itself, it's probably time to replace them. Now, just, just because they maybe have a little bit of a stain to them, that, that's not going to impede things. But um, if they're starting to fall apart, obviously you'd want to replace those. One of the reasons that, that keeping the filters clean is this actually controls a couple of things. How, what kind of flow you're getting through the jets? Because if you think about it, if these are all clogged up with debris, we're not going to get as good of therapy action. And the other thing that happens, if we're not getting enough water flow, it can shut the heater off. And so what, ha what happens is the heater has a kind of a safety device in it that if there's not enough flow through the heater, it will shut off. So Tony and his team will get a lot of questions. Hey, my heater's not working. And the first question they'll ask you, how long has it been since you've cleaned your filter? So filter cleaning is really, really, really important. So once a month, pull it out, rinse it off, chemically clean it, and then uh, ideally rotate the filter, a new filter back in and just keep rotating those. Um, there are a couple of products that can help the filter work a little bit better. Some of you might use a product called water clarifier, as you can imagine by its name. It helps clarify the water. And the way it does this is it takes really fine particles that are so fine that they pass through the filter. It makes them larger so the filter can pick them up. Pretty simple technology. Some people add this you know, once a week just to help keep the water extra clear. The other product that can help, if you tend to get use the spa a lot, multiple, you know, fairly heavy usage, you know, a family, three or four times a week, four or five people, you may experience a little bit of a water line buildup, kind of a scum line. Using a natural spa enzyme can reduce the amount of that buildup, and it also does help keep the filter clean as well by digesting body oils and things like that. So that can be used as well. All right, so that was filtration. The next area is some of the housekeeping chores. This is probably one of the least fun parts of owning a hot tub, but periodically you want to scoop out any debris, that top left-hand picture, that's a skimmer net. So if you've got any debris floating on the surface, skim that out. 
Uh, there are some vacuums available. The top right hand, that's kind of a portable vacuum. So if you're getting a little bit of sediment on the bottom of the hot tub, you can uh, basically vacuum that out. If you're getting a, a water line buildup, kind of a scum line, you want to keep that clean. That's a good place for bacteria to harbor. So we have cleaners like off the wall that you can put on a sp uh, sponge or a scrub pad like you see there on the bottom right to keep that water line clean. Because if you think about it, if we've got a scum line, that's a good place for bacteria to harbor. And, and usually that's quite often right at the water line. It's not always touching the water that's got sanitizer in it. So there is a good possibility that bacteria could grow there as well. So you want to keep that water line clean as well. All right, so that's kind of the first three keys, good circulation, filtration, cleaning. And so really the bulk of the presentation today is on really the water. I almost, like I said, I almost hate to call it chemistry. It's really water care. And so maintaining proper water care will prevent damage to your equipment like corrosion, scaling, surface staining, cloudy water, um, soaker discomfort. There's a couple things that can happen. If the pH gets way out of balance, we can get some uh, skin irritation, eye irritation. If we don't have enough sanitizer in the water, we can get some little skin rashes as well. So the water chemistry is, is really important. It's also important to the life of your hot tub. One of the things that tends to void manufacturer's warranties is by not keeping the water in proper balance. So this is pretty important. Any of you that are new spa owners is, is really to keep the water in, in proper balance. And so I'm, in my next slide here, there's four, really four water balancing factors. The most important one is the first one is the pH of the water. This is simply a scale you may remember from school. You know, the pH scale goes from zero to 14. pH of seven is neutral. Everything below seven is acidic and corrosive. Everything above that is uh, what we call basic or alkaline. That's the one you want to be testing once or twice a week. If you're a new hot tub owner, you know, test it a couple times a week. And the, the products that we use, it's pretty simple. If the pH is low, you'll see in my next slide where we want to keep it. But if the pH is low, you add pH increaser. If it's high, you add pH decreaser. Those are kind of the two primary products that you're going to want to keep on hand and test weekly. The other two things, total alkalinity and calcium hardness, the, these pretty much just need to be adjusted every time you drain and refill your hot tub. These are actually minerals that we put in the water, and these vary on the part of the country that you live in. So, for example, pretty much any city, even well water to some extent, in western Oregon, western Washington has pretty low mineral content. So when we first fill a hot tub, it's pretty normal that we'll have to raise both the total alkalinity and the calcium hardness. The last factor there, total dissolved solids. This is a test that Tony and his team will do in the store that basically tells us how old the water is and whether it's time to drain and refill the hot tub. And I'll talk a lot more about that at, towards the end. So let's just look at the water balancing factors. This again is the most important factor. We want to maintain the pH between 7.2 and 7.6. And you can see that on the picture of the test strip there. Um, we want it kind of in that sweet spot. And it, we, can, we can live with really anything from 7.2 to 7.8. It's when it gets below that, below 7.2 or above 7.8, then we can have some skin irritation, eye irritation. We could have scale buildup on the um, inside of the hot tub, corrosion of heating elements, those kind of things. So, it, and the chlorine, if you're using chlorine especially, chlorine doesn't work very well when the pH is outside of that range. So test it once a week. If the pH is low, we add increaser. If it's high, we add decreaser. On the back of the bottle, it will tell you how much to add based on the gallonage of your hot tub. So make sure you've got kind of a, a ballpark figure of how many gallons of water you have in your hot tub so you know how much to add. The product can be added uh, directly to the hot tub. Some, some manufacturers of spas recommend adding it to the filter co compartment, so check your uh, spa owner's manual. But uh, typically this can be added directly to the hot tub or through the filter compartment. Allow it to circulate for 15 minutes 
and boom, you can get in the hot tub. It's that easy to adjust the pH. And again, as a reminder, keep the air controls off when it, whenever you're adding any of the chemicals. The second factor, this is especially when we drain and refill a hot tub, we want to protect the pH. This, this particular uh, parameter helps keep the pH stable. We call it the total alkalinity. It's certain minerals that are in the water that buffer the pH. And so this needs to be adjusted every time we drain and refill the hot tub. The proper range is 125 to 150 parts per million. And uh, um, typically, our tap water in the Western Washington, Western Oregon is somewhere around 40 to 50 parts per million. So typically every time you drain and refill, you're gonna have to increase this level a little bit. And, and again, the main benefit is this helps keep the pH more stable. There is an alternative method called Spa Century. Uh, some of you that maybe have gotten a little bit frustrated with the uh, water balance, this is a, a kind of a one-step product that can be used when you drain and refill. If you want more information on that, I'd, I'd uh, definitely check with Tony and his team there at the pool and spa house if that might be a good option for you. And then the third balancing factor is the calcium hardness. It's kind of funny. We actually want to have relatively hard water in a hot tub, somewhere around 100 to 200 parts per million of calcium. Typically, the tap water in, in the northwest is around 50, maybe even a little bit lower than that. So every time you drain and refill, we'll typically add a little bit of calcium hardness to the water. That makes the water less corrosive and also helps the water have the tendency to not foam quite as much either. So that can help. If you tend to get a lot of foaming, um, adding some calcium hardness a lot of times will help minimize that. And then the other product on the right there, um, stain and scale control. This is a product we put in every time we drain and refill uh, to prevent any mineral co metal content in the water to discolor the water and to prevent scaling. So that's uh, kind of a weekly maintenance product that we'll put in to prevent uh, staining and, and scaling. And I'm just going to stop for a minute. Any questions on water balance? Not um, in the chat, Randy. Okay. Just again, again, the, the most important one is keeping that pH in balance. And just from the, you know, when you look at what the health department does when they go out to a commercial hot tub, that's one of the tests that they'll run because the reason they do that is if the pH isn't in the proper range, the chlorine or bromine doesn't work quite as well. And obviously the health department's concerned with um, how well the sanitizer is working in the water. All right, so the next, after we take, of the water balance and it doesn't matter what system you're on everybody needs to maintain water balance if you're using chlorine bromine you're on one of the low chlorine mineral systems that everybody needs to maintain ph the next area is sanitizing and oxidizing the water and sanitizing that's keeping chlorine bromine or some type of sanitizer in the water to keep the water safe the types of things that can happen in a hot tub we can get, get little skin rashes or even sometimes a respiratory infection if the water isn't properly sanitized so we'll talk about that next we also you probably all have heard the term shocking the spa we refer to that as oxidation that's the removal of contaminants from the water, like perspiration and body oils and suntan lotions and that type of stuff. That keeps the water crystal clear. And then there's a, a few uh, enhancing products that we can put in that help the, help the water quality as well. But the two main are sanitizing and oxidizing. And we're, we're going to kind of hit this from a high level. There's a lot of different options here. If you want to look at a di different option, get with Tony and his team. But typically, the three or four primary sanitizers, these are all EPA registered as sanitizers for hot tubs, is chlorine, bromine, and one of the mineral systems like Nature 2, the at ease system, the frog, the frog system. And the key here is maintaining the proper level of sanitizer. So if you just use the old standby true, tried and true chlorine, the level that you want to maintain is three to five parts per million. That, you test it with your test strip. If it's between three and five, you're, you're great. If it's lower than three, you want to add some more chlorine to get that level up above three parts per million. And we, don't, we really don't want to go above five 
Some people are sensitive to higher chlorine levels. Um, it could, when we get too high, we can start bleaching out bathing suits and that type of thing. Um, and then you can see the bromine levels that we would want to maintain. People will quite often ask us, which one's better? And usually my answer is, um, whichever one you prefer, they all kill bacteria very effectively. Some people like chlorine, some people like bromine, some people like the lower mineral systems. It's really personal choice. You can switch back and forth, try a different one. We do typically would recommend draining and refilling in most cases when you switch from a different type of sanitizer, but it really is, is personal choice. Some people like bromine tablets because you can put them in a floating dispenser. It's really personal choice and just maintaining the appropriate level. And people will always ask us, how often do we need to add this? It really depends on usage, um, how many people in the hot tub. And so chlorine and bromine do dissipate pretty quickly. So you might need to add it every couple of days if you're just hand feeding the granular products in. You'll kind of learn your spa's personality um, I definitely, if you're a new spa owner, before you use the hot tub, check the chlorine level or the bromine level. If it's low, add, we're talking about small amounts. We're talking about adding like teaspoons of product based on the gallonage. Add it directly to the hot tub, let it circulate for 15 minutes, and then you can get in the hot tub. We just need it dissolved into the water. But this will make sure the water is free of bacteria. The second Part of this is oxidation, and it asks the question, why do we oxidize? This is the process of removing contaminants from the water, body oils, you know, perspiration, those kind of things. This is the step that keeps the water crystal clear, uh, helps improve the sanitizer efficiency. In most spas, we recommend shocking once a week. And yeah, there's a couple of different products that you can use, you know, check with the store and which one they would recommend depending on what type of a sanitizer that you use. But typically once a week, we'll add the shock you know, after we've used the hot tub, especially if you've had you know, the family over for the weekend, you've been in and out of the hot tub, Sunday night would be a great time to shock the spa. We add these products okay, directly nice. to the spa, um, pump and filter operating, air controls off. And we also wanna leave at least half the cover off the spa when we shock the spa. The reason for this is there's actually a chemical reaction that takes place where the contaminants in the water gas off from the spa. And so we need to allow those contaminants to release into the air. And so keeping the cover off will help make sure the oxidation process ha has been achieved. And again, the main purpose of this step is to keep the water crystal clear. Typically in most spas, we recommend shocking once a week. And then really, there's a few products that we can enhance the water with. Stain and scale, we do recommend adding once a week to prevent you know, discolorations of the water and scale buildup. The next two products are really just, if, if you wanna enhance the water quality, water clarifier to help keep the water extra clear. If you wanna take the water to kind of the next level, this is called Spa Complete. This makes the water kind of feel softer and silkier. It does have a lavender eucalyptus fragrance to it. It also has a water clarifier and a product to help keep the water line clean. This could be really be used. It's, it's kind of up to you if you want to enhance the water quality a little bit, but this makes the water feel really good. And then really the, the fifth key is testing the water. And I've referred to this a couple of times. The two main tests that you all want to make sure you're testing at least once a week is the pH and the sanitizer test. And so you can see on this uh, slide of the test strip, you've got, you know, if you're using chlorine or bromine, it'll tell you what level you've got of chlorine or bromine. If it's low, you need to add more. And if the pH is low or high, you know that you need to either add pH increaser or decreaser. Um, the test strips, these do have an expiration date on them, so you don't want to use them too far past the expiration date. Also, when you pull the test strip out of the bottle, make sure your fingers aren't wet so you get any water into the bottle that can contaminate, contaminate the other test strips. Um, and then anytime you want to have a more thorough analysis done of either your tap water or 
the spa water itself, bring a water sample into, into one of the four pool and spa house stores. They do free computerized water testing. And um, especially if you're a new spa owner, bring, us, bring them a sample of the water you fill the hot tub with. They can then give you a computer printout of what you need to add and how, how long to wait until you uh, um, go to the next step when you refill the hot tub. Because there is a little bit more involved balancing alkalinity and calcium hardness, those kind of things when you first fill the hot tub. And that can make it a heck of a lot easier having a, a basically a recipe card for that. And then really the last key is how often to drain and refill. And this really depends on how much you use the hot tub and how many people. You know, if somebody asks us in general, we'll say approximately every three to four months, you would want to drain and refill the hot tub. Some people might need to drain and refill more frequently. Some people may be able to go six months, possibly up to a year. It really depends on usage. What happens is that the water gets to a point where it's just worn out. It doesn't look as good. It's got a little bit of an odor to it. Does it feel as good on your skin? Basically, we've got with too much stuff in the water. We call it total dissolved solids, but basically it's too much stuff in the water. and It's just time to drain and refill. And so you'll, you'll know, you know, if the water just isn't improving, it's probably time to drain, drain and refill the hot tub. It's, it's kind of an example, like a hotel motel hot tub, they typically drain once a week because of the higher usage. Typically in general, a backyard residential hot tub about every three to four months. We, we do recommend if you haven't used this before, at least once a year, we'd recommend adding the spa system flush just before you get ready to drain and refill your hot tub. This basically cleans out the plumbing lines. So you the process with this product, you pull your filters out, add the whole bottle to the spa water and let it run for 15 minutes to a half an hour. And then and it'll pull out a lot of contaminants in the plumbing lines and then drain and refill the hot tub and, and start the refill process, which is, this is the refill process. When you first fill the hot tub, the first product that we always add is the stain and scale control to help minimize any issues with any metals that might be in your tap water. And then this is the order that we would adjust the uh, water quality parameters. We always balance total alkalinity first, 125 to 150. Then we balance the pH to 7.2 to 7.6, and then the calcium hardness between 100 and 200 parts per million, and then add your sanitizer of choice, and you're off and running. And then really the, la the last thing is just a couple things on spa troubleshooting. Really, if you maintain what we just went over, you shouldn't have a lot of these types of issues, but kind of the common problems that we run into are foaming, cloudy water, water mold, and discolored water. So kind of starting from the top pictures that you see there, that top left picture, that's obviously a lot, that's a lot of foaming. I think this spa was vandalized with some laundry detergent or something. You shouldn't get that much foaming. Um, this is a little bit less foaming. You know, it's pretty normal to have a little bit of sudsing when you turn the jets on, but you shouldn't have, you know, several inches of foaming. If you are, the water might be starting to get worn out. You can apply some anti-foam, which you'll see in my next slide. That might help knock the foaming down. Um, this picture right here, in the that's got that white flake on top of the water in the filter compartment, that's water mold. It kind of looks like, um, oh, pieces of dead skin or little pieces of toilet paper kind of floating in the water. That's water mold, which typically is caused by not keeping up with your sanitizer levels. Or in some cases, one of the things I didn't mention earlier, whenever you're adding chlorine or shocking the spa, make sure all the jets are on. If you've got a waterfall in your spa, make sure the waterfall's on. We want to make sure we get chlorine and shock throughout the um, circulation system, the filter. One of, one of the causes of water mold is we get some stagnant water in the, in the waterfall, or if you've got a spa with diverter valves, if you, you, you don't use some of the portions of the jet in the hot tub, we can get a buildup of water mold in there. And, and uh, 
So we want to make sure that we're always flushing that water out and getting the sanitizer into those areas of the hot tub so we don't get water mold. That bottom right picture, that's a spa that had a little bit of copper in the water that turns the water kind of a green tint. Um, so we, we can use stain and scale to help get rid of that. So there's a few different issues that we run into. If you do run into one of these types of issues and you're gonna come into the store, take a picture of it so you, you can show the staff what it looks like and they can give you the specific treatment for that. And as far as foaming, if you are getting at foaming, we can use a product called anti-foam that will knock the foam down immediately. You just add a few drops. You wanna use this fairly sparingly. It will, if you, if you overdose with this, it'll cause a little bit of a scum line. So just put, comes with a flip top lid, just put a few drops right on the foam and that'll knock, knock the foaming down. Any any questions? Uh, and he asks, so when you add shock, the jet should be on, and when adding pH increaser or decreaser, no jets. So, um, good, good just question. To confirm. So, yeah. So good good question. The jet, whenever we're adding any chemicals to the water, the jets should be on, but the air control should be off. So those little dials on top of the spa, we always want to have the jets running when in, whenever we're adding any of the chemicals, but the air control should be off. And Randy, uh, so a lot of hot tubs, right? You have a low speed and a high speed or low jets, high jets. Does it matter? Um, do we just need the low jets on, high jets on? Does it matter? It doesn't really matter. We just want to, we just want to get the water, the products dissolved into the water. Uh, Matt asks, how long after our first shock on a new hot tub do we have to wait to enter the water? Is it because um, it's killing them to wait? <laughs> uh, yeah, so so if if you're getting ready to if you want to use the hot tub as soon as possible, I probably I, I probably would use the non-chlorine shock. Uh, still make sure you've got you know the three to five parts per million of chlorine in the water, but the non-chlorine shock, you could shock the water and use it 15 minutes later. Um, typically, when we shock a spa, um, it is we would um, um, do that after we've used the hot tub, leave the cover off for 15 minutes, and then you know put, put the cover back on. Too My, late. We uh, shocked last two, night about 2 a.m. So yeah, so go test the go test the spa as long as the chlorine level is between three and five parts per million, you're good to go. Get get in the hot tub. If let's say for example the, um, let's say the chlorine level is above five, is the way you can reduce chlorine levels fairly quickly is just you know pull half the you know, fold back half the cover, turn the jets on full blast, let it gas off. The chlorine level will come down on its own fairly rapidly. Thanks, Randy. Uh, Mike, you have your hand raised. Do you want to unmute uh, yourself and ask? Yeah, Go I got I got a few questions. Um, when you talked about circulation and the amount of time for that, when the heater comes on, I would imagine the pumps come on with that. Will the aerators also come on if they're set open? Uh, they they will. If if you've left the air controls open, mm -hmm. it's going to be pulling in some uh, additional oxygen. So do you recommend after each use to turn the aerators off so there's just the circulation pumps are running? Yes, I would. I, I would. If you if you can remember, it's not the end of the world, but I definitely would recommend turn the air controls off when you're done using the hot tub. And then I got a question about um, sanitizer level. You're mentioning three to five parts per million. The spa that I'm purchasing has an ozone generator in it and it has a mineral cartridge that sits on top of the filter and yes. their recommendation is 0. 0.5 yes parts per that's million. true that is true with those mineral systems you can run a, a lower level of chlorine okay yep you have hey, that exactly right mike just a quick note on that uh note the manufacturer's recommendations on replace those minerals Mineral cartridges are only good for about four months at a time. So just make mm -hmm. sure that you stay up to date with that as well. And then when you drain the hot tub, does all the water come out of the tubes and the jets or do you need to blow it out or does it 
drain itself completely? It uh, it usually doesn't. I think most of the spas you still have a little bit of water left in uh, left in there, um, but that little bit of water is not a concern of refilling the hot tub. The only time that would be a concern is if you, for whatever reason, were going to winterize the hot tub and not leave water in the hot tub. Then you would want to blow those lines out just to make sure that if you ever um, if we ever got freezing temperatures, that that water inside there wouldn't freeze and expand and obviously break break and the plumbing line. And would you take line. like a shop vac and reverse it and blow blow through yep. the system, like through the filter cartridge? Or yeah, um, Tony, any thoughts? Where would you blow that? Well, I think you'd probably just blow out the nozzles. You're mainly concerned about the the really small lines, the little three quarter inch or three eighths inch lines that are feeding the jet. So I would just put them to each little jet nozzle. Um, make sure too yeah. that those jets can open and close as well. So you gotta make sure that they're all open, right? When you're trying to blow air through it. Um, right. But I would mainly focus on all just your jets primarily. And then one last question, when uh, cleaning or doing that once a year, sanitizing or whatever it was called, the filters stay in or stay out? They're out. The system flush that you're talking about, that that cleans the plumbing lines. You want to pull the filters out and then put the system flush and run it for about 15 minutes to a half an hour. And and that will pull out a bunch of you know, stuff out of the plumbing lines. You probably get some foaming and then and then drain and refill the hot tub. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Any more questions? One quick point, too, that I just want to revisit. Uh, Randy talked about rotating filters. Um, the pool and spa house would carry a lot of filters, but it's very helpful um, if you want us to see which filter that it is that you need. If we have it in stock to grab another set, we would ask that you would either bring in pictures and measurements of length and diameter of your filter or actually bring in one of your filters so that way we can size it up because there's so many different shapes and sizes. So that would be good as well. And Any then other when gonna, when's this going to post on Facebook? So we will post this uh, primarily on YouTube and probably Facebook um, by, by right. midweek. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week at the latest. So it'll be right. relatively quickly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So thank you again for your time. We hope that this was uh, valuable. Uh, that you were able to grab a few extra nuggets that will prove to be helpful for you. Again, we're available at the stores 9 to 6, Monday through Friday, Saturday 9 to 5. With um, We can do water testing at any point in time. Again, it just takes a couple minutes, so we're glad to kind of help double-check the efforts that you're making with your test strips and and products. Um, Randy, you got anything else to close us with? or? I, I don't. Thank you uh, for joining us. Enjoy your hot tub. If you ever have any questions, please call Tony or any of his staff, they're, re they're ready to help anytime. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day.